All right, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Vicky3 Academy, and here we are discussing uh, Two Sicilies today in our basic country guide. So I've done a kick the tires on, on Two Sicilies, but I've also played around with a little bit with Two Sicilies now, so I think I can do a better job with our tutorial um, while still giving you a little bit of historical flavor. So Two Sicilies, um, this is a country that in 1836, it's got this little ruler here, Ferdinand II. Um, he has not yet really begun to uh, like super duper crackdown um, in 1837 and going onwards, Ferdinand II becomes incredibly autocratic, and that is kind of why Two Sicilies never gets anywhere uh, historically. Like eventually, they end up collapsing to a, a an invasion by a private citizen by Giuseppe Garibaldi, um, and then being annexed into Sardinia Piedmont. Despite the fact, and let's take a look at this right here. Right, we've got 7.3 and seven. Despite the fact that you're like twice the size of Sardinia Piedmont, um, historically Two Sicilies is going to be destroyed by uh, Sardinia Piedmont and get rolled up into Italy. And and that's kind of due to what happens in terms of their government, but you also, you do start behind. So let's just take very briefly, let's take a look at uh, what's going on in, in Sardinia Piedmont. So they have steelworking, they have lathe, um, they have Napoleonic warfare right here. They have mass communication. Whereas down here in Two Sicilies, what do we have? Well, um, we have steelworking, awesome, but we do not have lathe, oops. Uh, we don't have Napoleonic warfare either. And we also don't even have mass communication. So what that means is that as um, Two Sicilies, you are gonna start meaningfully behind uh, in terms of your technology versus Sardinia Piedmont. But you start out so far ahead in terms of your resources that it's worth just leaning into your strengths and then just beating the crap out of them, right? There, there's been plenty of plenty of uh, examples throughout history of people with not quite as much technological sophistication, but enormous advantages in terms of resources conquering everybody else. That, that, that happens all the time. Um, but as you're, in terms of your technology, it, you kind of gotta, you gotta do some triage, like depending on what your immediate goals are. Um, I think I think you probably don't want to even mess around with with going through mass communication and to nationalism just because you start so much stronger than everybody else. I would just probably take, pick uh, Napoleonic Warfare up and aim to just puppet everybody because you just puppet everybody then like it doesn't matter if, if Sardinia Piedmont has a much better technology than you do if they're already your puppet. And so I would I would just click this and then just go on the warpath. Um, that's that one's gonna be pretty easy for you to do. Just recruit generals here. So keep in mind, I went over this in the uh, the Sweden video, but you start with a ten stack of of navy. That is a big deal and will allow you to destroy some of these Italian miners by just like starting a war, getting a a land front, and then launching a naval invasion near their capital. Like done. That, that's gonna capitulate half of your enemies in two months because that's how long it's going to take the naval invasion to come together but you do need to make sure that the stacks are about the right size because if they're too if they're too big or too small or whatever then it's it's not going to work very well um you're going to end up with with a naval invasion size penalty and that's really bad um so in addition to the technology that you're going to be working on which i do recommend napoleonic warfare for just like conquering purposes. You also need to change your government up. Um, the first thing I wanna tell you is that Ferdinand II historically kinda sucks. Get rid of these guys. Your goal um, as two Sicilies, unless it, you're like role playing, should be absolutely to overthrow your monarchy. Cause like sometimes the monarchs are good and you wanna keep them around. Like Mahmoud II in the Ottoman Empire, he's a banger, he's really good. Um, the French the French king, um, uh, Louis Philippe, he's also really good, but like yours, Yours is awful and needs to go. And so you need to get rid of him. Um, but the first, but before you do that, you actually can um, make some really helpful, meaningful changes for yourself. Um, landowners, you do not have uh, serfdom. Um, and so you can actually use the Corn Laws journal entry. Um, so let's go ahead and just do that. Corn Laws journal entry, it says here, you need export prioritized tariffs on grain. And then you need one of either isolation or mercantilism. Okay, great. You've got mercantilism. Landowners are powerful. Yep. Landowners are proud of the government. Yep. All right, cool. So what you need to do is you need to go in here and you need to go over here and you need to find your grain and you need to switch it over to encourage exports. And what that's going to do is it's going to open up a journal entry for you called corn laws. And so long as this is around, there's going to be these, you see how it says debug 
on pulse that means that there's going to be some events that are going to fire in regards to this and some of them are going to make like the aristocracy stronger some of them might add a uh, minimum wage or they might add like you know a requirement for you to add um some resources from the government somewhere but one of them and and it's the best one by a long shot is gonna say hey you got a new leader who's like uh mad and wants to do some free trade you want to do some free trade click yes and then what'll happen is this guy whoever it is is going to get thrown out of power and then you're going to get a new dude who's going to have the free trade um ideology down here which is critical for exactly one reason, but it's a really, really good one. That character is going to use all of the clout and political strength of the landowner to help you implement laissez-faire instead of interventionism, which means that you're going to have an enormous um, investment pool as long as you have a, a pretty reasonable size uh, indus industry base, which you're going to build because, you know, industry is good. Um, and then you're also going to get a 25% loan interest rate reduction. That's really really powerful really really powerful it means you can do a lot of debt building very very cheap if you can switch into laissez-faire you can also switch into free trade if you want um which is also really helpful it's it is going to cost you some money because it's going to remove tariffs but it's going to it's going to reduce your bureaucracy cost on trade routes which depending on how much trade you're doing can be a really big deal um and it's going to increase the trade route volume and trade route competitiveness um and so if you're gonna if you're gonna go into this side you do need to be aware that you're you're gonna need an infinite number of convoys so conquer with conquer to convoys is is my recommendation but you can do that. You've got a 10 stack. There are a lot of people who can't fight you. These are not like the laws that you're really trying to change. You're probably trying to change the laissez-faire. Interventionism is helpful um, if you do a lot of subsidizing, but laissez-faire is generally speaking going to be stronger for the average player simply because it requires you to not um, do a lot of, of micro in regards to, 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 to uh, using subsidies. Um, but what, what this really does, what this really does, in addition to giving you a, a gigantic investment pool contribution, if you have a free trader in charge of the landowner, they're going to be really happy and they're going to they're going to get a huge approval bonus. And that means that you can go in and you can change stuff um, like hereditary bureaucrats down to appointed bureaucrats if without without having the uh, the landowner get mad, um, mad enough to start a a political movement to resist the change because if there's a political movement to resist the change then they get to add their strength to the law change um as a stall chance which is really bad because that means that that it goes from being something where it's sort of like inevitable but it can take some time to something where it literally can fail because you can go from 45 down to zero through stall chances um and so you just need to be careful about that so government like I said, you're getting rid of this guy. I think, generally speaking, you want to bring in a petite bourgeoisie at first because you start so technologically backwards that your industrialists aren't going to have the methods of production necessary to be really strong immediately. Um, but the petite bourgeoisie will, especially because you have mercantilism, so they have control over the ownership of uh, your trade centers. Um, and so they're going to make a, a, mon a bunch of money, um, depending on how much trade you're doing. Um, but in addition to, to being able to do these, the hereditary bureaucrats change, you do need to get rid of your monarchy. Um, you probably want to prioritize getting enough uh, government, uh, enough bureaucracy that you can start a school. It doesn't matter which one, but you do need to start a school because you need to get this uh, literacy rate up because, again, your technology is so bad. You can build some academies or some universities. That's very good. But the universities are not going to get you where you need to be in terms of your research, right? Um, just because, like, it's just going to be adding two weekly innov innovation. That's not, that's not a lot. No. You need to get literacy up if you want to get technology up. Because um, you're so far behind that there's going to be a lot of texts that are going to be able to spread to you. Just a lot of texts that are going to be able to spread to you. And so... I think that while you're working on corn laws, it may even make sense for you to uh, see if you can work with just the Catholic Church instead of the petit bourgeoisie to get to get like religious schools done, um, and then you can pop back because religious schools is only seventy bureaucracy. If you can if you can uh, get that bureaucracy from somewhere, right now we've got 120 trade routes. Cool, that means we can cancel a trade route somewhere. Um, probably probably some of these export 
sulfur trade routes because we can do the same thing by just doing this right done um it's gonna it's gonna cause the price of of sulfur to plummet locally but that's kind of your pop's problem right that's that's that is the common mantra around here that is kind of your pop's problem because you want to make sure that you are taking care of your country long term and one thing you're going to need to do is get religious schools or some kind of schools online as, as quickly as possible once you've done that um and you've gotten your your corn laws up and going and and you can go in here and switch into laissez-faire and go in here and do appointed bureaucrats you can while you are doing that actually simultaneously be starting just like a, a Paul Atreides jihad for control of, of Italy. Because as long as these guys are not mad at you, protective and genial is like, I didn't re-roll, but holy, holy cow. They're, they they love us. They love us. Whatever. Great Britain, get wrecked. I don't care about you. Um, just just start just start invading just start invading Italy. Uh, you can just do puppets. You don't need to annex them. Um, puppets are generally speaking going to be more pro more profitable for you anyway because they're not going to create a lot of infamy. But be be aware that because of the nature of your unification play, which I, I think most people are going to be going for cultural unification when they play Two Sicilies, um, you do need to hit nationalism tech. Um, and then eventually, if there is another challenger for control of, of Italy, you need to beat them in a war. And then you're going to need to to have uh, you can click you can click form form Italy if you just want to do uh, direct annexation. But you can do like straight uh, unifications. Yeah. So by just doing research three for us uh, for two Sicilies, we could do a, a unification play immediately. And if we've already puppeted everybody, there might not even be any people to stop us. Um, and that's that's one of the advantages of just going through and, and just beating everybody up before you reach research uh, nationalism. Because if, if you can do a, na a, a unification play and just defend, you should be all right. You should be OK. You should be in, in good in a good position to form Italy. But yeah, make sure you got friends. Um, once, once you've, once you've unified core Italy, then you might want to turn on Italy or uh, turn on Austria and take Lombardy and Venetia and South Tyrol. Cause that's uh, maybe even Istria just kind of like depends. Cause they are a North Italian heritage. Like you, you could, you can just keep, you can just keep spilling. You can just keep spilling. Take, take, take over this. This is, this is rightful. Uh, rightful Italian clay, rightful Italian clay, rightful, rightful, rightful. Um, but you got to start somewhere, and and that's sort of what the the this guide is all about. Just start somewhere. Make sure that you're uh, that you're prioritizing the right sort of growth, and you should be okay. All right, uh, that's Walker, and that's our basic country guide for two Sicilies. Take care.